This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening, I'm Ryan Yamamoto in for Juliet tonight. We begin with some bad news for Oakland A's fans. The team just clearing another major hurdle in their attempt to move the team to Las Vegas. Within the last few hours, the governor of Nevada signed off on a plan to pour $380 million in taxpayer money into a brand new stadium on the Strip. And as you would expect, this latest news is getting a lot of reaction from both sides. Ann McAvick joins us live in the newsroom with the very latest. Ann. Yeah, Ryan, it appears the commissioner of baseball considers this a done deal, and he's starting to burn some major bridges in Oakland, blaming the city for the situation. Today, he also laid out what is next in the league's approval process for that move. Rob Manfred says the A's will file a relocation application, then a committee is going to make a recommendation that will eventually go to all MLB owners for a final vote. He went on to say he feels sorry for the fans here in Oakland. I do not like this outcome. I understand why they feel the way they do. I think that the real question is, what is it that Oakland was prepared to do? There is no Oakland offer, okay? I mean, they, they never got to the point where they had a plan to build a stadium at any site. Now, of course, there was a plan in the works to build a new waterfront ballpark at the Port of Oakland's Howard Terminal. That option was looking viable for a few years there. But the A's wanted more public money contributed to the project than the city was able to give, and there was still some logistical red tape to be cut. But Oakland's mayor says the commissioner's statement there is totally false, saying there was a very concrete proposal under discussion, and Oakland had gone above and beyond to clear hurdles, including securing funding for infrastructure, providing an environmental review, and working with other agencies to finalize approval. She says the A's had too many demands for the space, which they seem to have had downsized when they made their plans for Vegas. The A's, meanwhile, sent out a statement saying, we are excited about Southern Nevada's dynamic and vibrant pro sport scene, and we look forward to becoming a valued community member through jobs, economic development, and the quality of life and civic pride of a major league baseball team. I'm not even a big sports fan, but that statement does kind of bite. Right now, the A's lease at the Coliseum expires after the 2024 season, and the new stadium in Vegas wouldn't be open until 2028 at the earliest, Ryan. Here in the Bay, a weather than usual start to the year, all but eliminated drought conditions, giving Northern California firefighters a quiet start to the wildfire season. And taking a live look now toward the North Bay and Napa Valley, fire danger, something that's always on our minds as we head into summer. And Paul's here with an update. Yeah, what you're looking at there has helped. The intrusion of the marine layer far inland across the Bay Area, helping to knock down the fire threat, even in the absence of much if measurable rain this time of year. We can measure the fire threat across the state with something called the relative burn probability. This is from Pyrocast, and basically, you want to be on the green side of the spectrum. We see a little bit of yellow showing up here in the foothills near Merced and Fresno, but there's no red, there's no maroon that would indicate very high fire probabilities and rapid spreads if those fires manage to start. Now, what the fire expert within Max's story mentioned, Dr. Clements, was that we are not certain what's going to happen in July and August. Just one heat wave is all it would take to really dry out the fire fuels. And above normal temperatures are in the forecast for July, August, and September. Three month outlook from the Climate Prediction Center came out today. Now, this doesn't mean that each and every day is going to bring above average temperatures for those three months. It doesn't say how far above average we're going to be, just that once we average it out over that three month time period, it's likely it's going to come out to be above what is normal for summer and then into early fall. Something we'll continue to monitor as we head into kind of an up and down temperature pattern the next several days. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Paul. And despite the favorable start to the year, a lot of property owners are extra worried about what the fire season could bring. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to take a look at the impact insurance companies will have about them pulling out of the state. Well, some new video to show you from that aftermath of that three alarm fire that ripped through a San Jose storage facility. Our crew found evidence of fireworks scattered all around that unit that exploded right around this time yesterday. Witnesses told us they heard repeated popping sounds long after the initial blast. One person even caught it on camera. Investigators have yet to release an official cause of the fire or a damage estimate, but we do know they have made an arrest. We got calls in for more details on that. Well, as the weather heats up, Bay Area fire crews are warming up. 120 of them attended a seasonal fire training in San Rafael, all to prepare for a potentially challenging season ahead. This year, with the late rains, 
we've gotten a significant amount of fuel that's built up. So we're going to see fires burn in, in higher, hotter intensity um, and increased speed. Firefighters say it's also time for you to make some preparations like cutting dead trees and creating a defensible space around your property. Californians now have fewer options when it comes to protecting their homes after two major insurance companies announced they're going to pull out of the market. But as Dominic Garcia reports, they may not be gone forever. If you're wondering why State Farm and Allstate said no more home insurance policies in California, the answer is simple. They've just become unprofitable in writing insurance in California. Harold Newbill is the owner of the McClatchy Insurance Agency, and he says there are a number of factors at play, mainly the number of fires we've had, combined with the high cost of rebuilding. But he doesn't think this is permanent. Is this a pause, and do you see them returning? I do. Uh, ultimately, California is a huge insurance market that insurance companies want to offer their products in, uh, but all of them are seeking some significant uh, increases in rates or how they offer, depending on the area. In fact, California just gave Allstate the green light to raise home insurance rates by 4%. Even so, Allstate is standing by their decision to stop writing new policies here. For the companies still offering home policies, they're increasing scrutiny. Companies are also asking for pictures in some cases of the home, proof of alarm certificates that if you have a home alarm. Uh, if you're in a gated community, I think it helps the consumer to be able to highlight the safe features of their home. And Harold says to shop around, maybe check with a broker who works with multiple companies. That said, these days, be prepared to pay more. Well, meanwhile, this year's massive Sierra snowpack still has a lot of melting to do. And we're only halfway through June. It's nearly 400% higher than usual for this time of year. But today actually marked a big milestone as the Berkeley Central Sierra Snow Lab reported that today there was no snow on their snow pillow, which is how they measured the snow depth. That said, as you can probably see behind me, there is still plenty of snow. Most of this is kind of patchy, but on the southern side of the side over here, there's still a pretty decent amount. Most of this is no more than a few inches deep and will melt over the next couple days. The road. Well, this marks the first time since November of last year that the snowpack has been this low. Early childhood educators now sounding the alarm in response to San Francisco Mayor London Breed's new budget proposal. She is proposing a $20 million budget cut to the Department of Early Childhood this year and a $10 million cut this year as part of uh, next year as part of her plan to close the city's massive $780 million deficit. So many families like mine cannot afford to live and work in the city. Affordable childcare allows us to do that without fear of leaving paycheck to paycheck and going back into debt. I do not want to move backwards. Those proposed cuts represent some changes the mayor wants to make to Baby Prop C, which is a tax on commercial property leases that funds child care programs. The mayor wants us to spend the tax in order to incentivize the opening of new businesses downtown. We reached out to her office for a response, but we have not heard back just yet. California lawmakers are trying to enshrine the right to housing in the state's constitution, and proponents say that amendment would hold state and local officials more accountable for solving California's homelessness crisis. That proposed bill would recognize the fundamental right to, quote, adequate housing. Proponents also say it could influence local planning decisions by empowering lawsuits against zoning rules. It could also help the state to enforce pro-housing laws if that amendment does pass the state legislature. Voters would still need to approve it. Well, the next time you head to SFO, make sure you keep an eye out for their newest employee. This is Duke Ellington. Yes, SFO's new therapy cat. And he comes with his own little uniform. He's the newest member of the airport's WAG Brigade, which roams the halls of the airport to help nervous passengers calm down just a little bit. He's the first feline member of the brigade, joining several dogs, a rabbit, and a pig. I love that hat. Okay, the 86th annual San Francisco Stern Grow Free Concert Series, that kicks off this weekend. Here's a look at the entire lineup for the summer concert season. Snarky Puppy kicks things off this Sunday, and then the Flaming Lips wrap up things up on Sunday, August 20th. Tickets are free, but have to be reserved ahead of time. If you can't make it this weekend, we will carry the show live on our sister station, 
KBCW and streaming on CBS News Bay Area through the CBS News app. It all starts Sunday at 2 p.m. Thanks for watching. The news continues streaming on CBS News Bay Area. We'll see you back here with Sarah Donchi at 11.